Jeff, you want to explain that to me? Well, you're back. I'm back. You're back. Batman is back. Yeah, you're back. You're you're <laughs> you're back fighting uh, the left and the lies that are out there. You're throwing punches. Well, in fact, uh, Jeff, you said an interesting thing to me. I was we were talking in the production meeting this morning. I was showing the guys the three screws that have been pulled out of my hip, and you said. Right Wing Watch has some plans for those screws. Yeah, I, I, I think they're probably trying to raise money to put those things in your jaws right about <laughs> why, now. <laughs> why are my jaw shut? All right. Okay, but I am back. Good to be with you. Friday, Free For All Friday. We'll talk about anything you want to talk about today. Got content I do want to deliver, and we'll talk about anything that you want to talk about as long as it has been in the news over the course of this past week. So, of course, the breaking news has to do with the fact that Jay Carney has uh, stepped down as the president's spokesman. I've said basically all I have to say about that, I, I just, I don't know how the guy did it for as long as he did, frankly. I, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I mean, he gets up there and, you know, he has to know that what he's saying is either not true, that he is avoiding the question, that he's being told to lie, that he knows what he's saying is not the truth, I don't know how you do that. Frankly, I don't know how you do that day in and day out. And he had to do it every single solitary day. I just, I, 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 it's amazing to me that he lasted as long as he did. I got one example. Let's grab uh, clip number six, if we can, Rob. I wasn't going to use this because this is about uh, Shinseki, who was forced out from the VA uh, this morning. So he... President Obama met with him, took him to the woodshed. He's gone. And here is John Carl of ABC talking to Jay Carney yesterday. And Jay Carney has, or John Carl has a very simple question for Jay Carney. It is not a complicated question. And listen to Jay Carney dance and bob and weave. And I think he just got, he just got tired of, of doing, the, doing this kind of stuff. Let's listen. John, the president addressed this question no, from no, the actually, podium. Yeah, no, he wasn't asked yes, directly. No. Does he have confidence in Secretary Sintek? The president believes that and is confident that uh, Secretary Shinseki has served his nation admirably, heroically as a soldier, as a general, uh, and that he has uh, accomplished some very important things as the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. And I listed them, uh, but they include uh, extending education benefits reducing veterans' homelessness, and uh, reducing the size of the backlog for disability claims while expanding vastly the number of veterans who uh, can make a claim. But does uh, the President right now have confidence in this Secretary Shinseki? Yes or no? It's a very simple yes or no question. Well, you told us I, last week he did have confidence. Does he have confidence now? What I would point you to is what the President said he, when asked ask about the view on Secretary Shinseki. <laughs> And I don't have, uh, I'm not going to improve upon his words uh, on this regard. He talked about but, but accountability. But he wasn't asked directly he if, about, if, if, if uh, he had confidence. I, I understand that the, it's a, the wordplay here, but I think question. that what is it's more not, important. It's not wordplay, it's a central question. Does he have confidence in on this, a on member the of his issue that, well, and, and we found out, of course, this morning that he didn't. The answer to that question is no, he does not have confidence in Eric uh, Shinseki, but you notice how many times Carl had to ask this question. John Carl, ABC News. Now, this is a guy, actually, that occasionally does actual journalism. Very rare in uh, the mainstream media. But John Carl occasionally will stumble into it. Uh, Jake Tapper used to do some decent journalism when he was part of the White House uh, press corps. Cheryl Atkinson, she got fired for doing decent journalism. The rest of them are just hacks. They're just lap dogs. They're just poodles. They're just part of the PR machine of the Obama administration. But John Carl, you know, I, I look at John Carl, I think he's a pretty smart fellow. He's a pretty sharp guy. And uh, I think he's gone along with the party line uh, m most of the way. But, you know, at some point, it's, it starts to insult your intelligence. And you start thinking, hey, these people are playing me for chumps. And I'm tired of that. I'm tired of being patronized. I'm tired of being talked to as if I'm an idiot. I'm tired of being talked to as if I'm a child who cannot understand what's going on here. So finally, John Carl, he's just had it. He's going to bore in. And so he keeps repeatedly asking Jay Carney, does the president have confidence in Shinseki? I've got it here one, two, three, four, five times. 
he asked that question. He asked, does the, does, the, does the president have confidence in Shinseki? Jay Carney says the president addressed this question from the podium. John Carl says he wasn't asked, asked directly, does he have confidence in Secretary Shinseki? So then Carney goes into the song and dance, his bloviation about all the wonderful things Shinseki has done in the service of his country. Carl interrupts. He gets back to the point. Does the president right now have confidence in Secretary Shinseki, yes or no? Says it's not rocket surgery. It's either yes, he does have confidence, or no, he doesn't. Last week you said he did have confidence. What is the status now? And Carney again d tries to dodge it. What I would point you to is what the president said. And John Carl interrupts him, but he wasn't asked if he was confident in Eric Shinseki. I understand that, Jay Carney says, the wordplay here. And, and that really insults uh, John Carl's intelligence, and I think he took great offense at that. He said, look, it's not wordplay. I'm not dancing with you. I'm not trying to outwit you. This isn't some kind of verbal battle we're involved in here. I just have a very simple question. Yes or no, does the president have confidence in General Senseki or not? And uh, John Carl just, I mean, uh, Jay Carney simply would not ask the question. Now, what you saw in this exchange, I mean, this has become routine for Jay Carney now in the past several months. I mean, the luster is gone from President Obama. I mean, the, everybody, all the liberals were raking his uh, West Point speech, drilling him for it. It was, it lacked punch. It lacked clarity. It was a nothing burger. What was he trying to say? There's no vision here. He would say one thing and then immediately qualify it and take it back. There's no direction here. We have no idea what the Obama doctrine is, even after listening to him. We don't know what the Obama doctrine is. And this was supposed to be some kind of groundbreaking speech he was going to give at West Point. And, Jeff, uh, you know, when we were listening to that soundbite uh, at West Point the other day, uh, you know, you made a comment about, and you noticed it right away. I was kind of focused on what the president was saying. But you picked up right away, this is at West Point, he is the commander-in-chief. This is the next generation of soldiers that are going to be sent out to protect our liberty and serve at his behest. And you made, a, uh, I thought, a pretty uh, a pretty straightforward observation. Were well, you talking about the applause? Yeah. Or yeah. lack, <clears throat> lack yeah. of applause? I mean, it just seemed like a, a little spattering of applause. Yeah. And, well, you know, and I read somewhere um, that like only 25% of the cadets either clapped or, or stood to give him an ovation. Like 25% the other, 75% sat on their hands the whole time. Uh, so, so, Jeff, let me ask you this. Just as an observer, uh, you look at that. These are the cadets. Here's the commander-in-chief. And 75% of them sit on their hands through the entire, what is supposed to be a groundbreaking foreign policy speech, what would you kind of infer from that about what these cadets think of their commander in chief? Well, it seemed like one of those high school, um, what do they call those? Those pep rallies they make you go to when your <laughs> team is zero and ten. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a good way to think of it. You know, completely lackluster. I think that the CNN anchor said that the reception that he got was an icy uh, reception. So I think that's uh, I, I think that is just exactly right, and it just didn't hit me at the time just how tepid the response was. And you think, you know, I mean, I had my differences with President uh, Bush. I mean, not that he knows or would even care, but I had my differences with President Bush on any number of policy issues. But do you, do you remember how he was he was received by the troops everywhere he went? I mean, they loved him. They loved the guy. And he loved them. You could tell it by the way he would tear up when he would kind of talk about the sacrifices he knew that they were making or had made or were preparing to make. And I honestly believe that President Bush would not send a single, single soldier into harm's way unless he thought it was absolutely essential for our national security and national interest. Now, I don't, I don't feel that way about President Obama. You know, I could be wrong. I just have to look at what I see, and it honestly looks to me like, like this is a man who really does not care. He does not care about the troops. He, he doesn't care if they're served up. It's not much more than, than cannon fodder. Uh, it doesn't seem to bother him, uh, the, the casualties. 
You know, we've got Americans. We've got this Christian woman in the Sudan. Her husband is an American citizen. She's with her brand newborn baby, born to her in that prison, bug-infested prison cell. Uh, and she's shackled to the floor or to the wall. She gave birth and changed, basically, to a newborn baby. She's got a 20-month-old child in there. Both of those are American citizens. And uh, she has been sentenced to die, sentenced to hang by the religion of Islam, the religion of peace. Uh, and what they've agreed to do over there is they're going to let her give birth to the child, which she did this week. And then she's going to be allowed to wean the child, which will take a couple of years. Then they're going to give a hundred lashes and then they're going to hang her. They're going to hang her for the crime of adultery and apostasy. She's considered an apostate because her father was a Muslim. She was born to a Muslim father. Therefore, that makes her Muslim. You don't get to choose. There's no freedom of religion in Islam. She doesn't get to choose her faith. Your father's a Muslim. That makes you a Muslim. There's nothing you can do about it. So she converted to Christianity. That makes her an apostate, which is basically what President Obama did. I mean, President Obama is just as much of an apostate as this woman is. I mean, if this woman deserves death at the hands of Muslims, then President Obama deserves death at the hand of Muslims because he was born a Muslim, father was a Muslim, he enrolled in school as a Muslim, and then he became an apostate when he was in high school, according to himself, when he converted to his version of uh, Christianity. Uh, but President Obama simply doesn't seem to care. You know, and this woman was sentenced to death for adultery, even though the only individual she slept with was her husband. But because he's a Christian and not a Muslim, According to the religion of peace, that makes it adultery. So she's been sentenced to die. They're, they let her give birth to the child. They're going to let her wean the child. Then they're going to whip her a hundred times. And then they're going to hang her by the neck until dead. And President Obama doesn't seem to care. Saeed Abedini, another American in an Iraqi prison, had a bunch of thugs went in there, dragged him out of his hospital bed, beat him up, and threw him back in the Iraqi prison. Got serious health issues that are not being addressed. And once again, President Obama just simply does not seem to care. I don't know if you remember back in the day, Grenada, when there was a coup on the island of Grenada and 100 of American medical students were held hostage there. President Obama sent, I mean, President Reagan sent the Marines in there. Boom! In there, set them free, out of there. Boom! Because he cared about American citizens overseas. Back in two.